Hey everybody, Tanya from Shooting Star SVG back and today I'm going to teach you how to create a seamless mermaid scale pattern in Inkscape. First time here, go ahead and click on the like and subscribe below as that does keep me motivated to continue making these videos so that way you can grow your business and change your life. And if you haven't already, head on over to the Facebook group where we are creating a community of like-minded individuals looking to grow their semi-passive income with digital downloads. Uh, learned a cool trick the other day, how to make a seamless mermaid scale pattern in Inkscape. Uh, it was a bit of a chore. Hopefully I can get through this without any hiccups, but it came out really cool. Now I have something that I can <laughs> utilize for designs um, and I'm really enjoying it. You will probably see Matilda in the background throughout this video. Hopefully she'll stay quiet. We shall see. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to head over to my computer screen and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is create a square. And you want to make sure that the square is uniform in shape. Okay, so we're going to lock our aspect ratio. We're going to go to... Uh, inches and we're just going to make sure we have a one inch by one inch square okay we're going to go down here to the bottom bar and change our opacity fill to 50 percent and i'm just going to change the color of this for um the purposes of this okay now the next thing that you're going to do is go to object and you're going to go to group and i'll show you why uh, in just a few minutes okay all right now you're going to go to edit clone create tiled clones, okay? That's gonna open up this window here. You're going to wanna make sure that the Charlie Mike CM reflection and glide reflection is checked. We're gonna do width and height 14 by 14 inches and click create. And you'll see this um, tiled clone come about, okay? The next thing you wanna do is click on a square. It doesn't really matter which one it is. And then you're going to go back to edit, clone, and you're going to go to select original. That's going to select your original square. You're going to want to raise this selection to the top, okay? Sorry. Then you're going to want to drag this over. All right, this is where the fun begins. Now we're going to just zoom in here. I'm going to double click off. You're going to click on until you can see that the rectangle in layer is selected. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your snapping is on for this, okay? So turn your snapping on. Go to the Bezier curves, go to the corner of the rectangle, and then, or the a square, I'm sorry, and then bring it to the corner, okay? That's gonna create this pattern here on your board. Okay, now I've seen this done a few different ways, but this is what works for me, okay? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create guides that are going to help me with creating this uh, mermaid uh, scale pattern, okay? So I'm going to bring guides down. Now we know this is a one inch by one inch square, so I'm bringing them over. Um, and I'm going to end up placing the square inside of that in just a minute, okay? So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Now, I don't know if you guys have worked with uh, guides before, but double click on this and make sure that it is at the exact mark or else it's not gonna line up the way that you need it to line up, okay? Once you have your guides where you want them to go, you're gonna select the square and move it. Make sure that down here you have your layer checked. If you have the rectangle checked, it's only gonna, or the square checked, it's only gonna move the square and not the line that you just created, okay? Now we're gonna zoom in. Well, I can do this a little bit zoomed out, I guess. You're going to click on edit nodes and you're going to go in and you're going to select your uh, um, your line. OK, and here you're just going to click and drag this out. OK, and then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to click on the nodes. And sometimes this is a little bit hard to see so you can move your arms. And what I like to do is I will snap them to the guides that I placed so that I have a uniform shape. OK. And you'll see what that's going to do now is I have this scalloped mermaid pattern on these clones, okay? So obviously we want like a thicker line. You're going to want to go to your fill and stroke and you're going to go to stroke style. Make sure that you have a round cap that's going to round out the caps. I like to work in pixels when I'm messing with my width 
and I'm just going to change that to 5 and see how that goes. Um, and that looks pretty good to me. You can always, because this is going to, we're going to turn this into an SVG, you can always increase the width later on if you're trying to make a particular design, but that's going to be entirely dependent on what your style is, okay? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to the rectangle, okay? And you can um, double click or click on that to get just the rectangle selected. And we're just going to delete that off, okay? And that's going to remove the background. Now, if you edit this line at all, it will edit these, but we don't want that, okay? So now that we have our pattern, what we can do is we can go ahead and select all this. And if you want to go ahead and delete the guides at this point, you can, but I just tend to leave them. You're just going to hit Control D to duplicate. And we're just going to drag this duplicated pattern over. Now, remember we created a 14 by 14, okay? Here's what you want to do. You want to go to your snapping and you want to turn everything on. This is going to help you um, when you're creating the box that you need, okay? But before we get into all that, we have all of this selected. You're going to go to Path, Stroke to Path, Ungroup, and sometimes this can take a few minutes because there's a lot of items here. Ungroup, and then go to Path, Union. Okay, now that this is a fill, you can go ahead and change the color to whatever you desire. Um, for the purposes of this, we'll just leave it at... Um, at black. Then you're going to create a square and we're just going to do a 12 by 12. I'm going to drop the opacity down again to 50%. And now that we have all this snapping on, you can drag it into the pattern, okay, wherever you want. This is what's going to make it seamless. It doesn't matter as long as you have scales in all of the, uh, all of the items here, okay. Hold down uh, select the square, select the pattern, and then go to path intersection. Now you have a seamless mermaid scale pattern. Okay, so I just went ahead and duplicated that. We're going to bring this over. Okay, and this is going to snap in. Hopefully it'll snap in good. It's hard to get it exactly lined up. It might, that's not exactly lined up. I did a bad job there. All right, there we go. And you can see that you have this seamless pattern. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you, duplicate that and drag it down. Okay, you have this beautiful seamless mermaid pattern. Okay, so you could easily just take this portion. I'm just gonna hit Control C. I'm gonna open a new window now remember, I have my document property set up to be uh, 12 by 12, okay? I don't know why Inkscape is giving me some trouble right now. There we go. And I'm going to paste this in, and then I'm going to go ahead and center that to the page. And then I can go ahead and save this as an SVG, okay? Mermaid Scales YouTube, okay? So another thing that you can do is if you're using this for a pattern and you want it to be smaller, you can change the width of this to six, and then you can kind of duplicate these over um, to have a smaller effect as well. And then you would just unionize them. Okay. So again, if I move this over, and I'm just going to scroll in so I can, um, or zoom in so I can get that situated here. All right. And you're going to want to get this as close as possible. I don't have my snapping turned on. So the snapping is really going to help you line these up the right way. And I just go ahead and turn everything on. I don't know why. It's just kind of like one of those forces of habit, I guess. All right. And you can see that that's lined up really well. Another way to check is to go to view, split mode, split. Okay. You're going to see that there's going to be a line where everything intersects. Okay. And that's okay. Because the goal of what we want to do now is we're going to select both of these and we're going to go to path union, okay, to create the new pattern. We're going to scroll over and make sure that there's no lines going through. And there isn't, okay? So now that this is unionized, you can go ahead and duplicate this. Hold down control to bring it down. 
There we go. That's all lined up there. Again, you're going to see this these lines here, which is not what we want, okay? But you can click on the top and click on the bottom, go to path union, and just double check to make sure all those little lines go away, all right? And then you're good to go. Now you have an even smaller seamless pattern. So you can utilize that for anything. Uh, previously, we had talked about how to utilize patterns in Inkscape. So you can actually add this in as a pattern um, and put it in. Um, another thing that you can do with this is, you know, you can draw a square. That's, let's just say, 12 by 12. And we're going to go ahead and center that to the page, bring it to the back. Um, and you can just like utilize a color there. Oh, I have my aspect ratio locked. I'm like, why is that so wonky? Okay, let me try that again. Okay, um, you can go in and you can actually take the um, mermaid scales and you can hold down control and offset it. Okay, and make the make the um, make it thicker if that's what you're trying to do. But you can take this, um, you can select both the top and the back, and you can go to path uh, difference, and that will subtract those out. Then if you want to take it a step third further, you can go to path, break apart, um, and you can color in each one of these scales differently if you're going for like a certain look, okay? Uh, and then kind of like go from there. So there's a myriad of ways that you can play around with this. It's just a really useful tip if you're trying to create a pattern that you want to utilize for Tumblr designs and things of that nature. So if you'll have any trouble or questions while going through this, feel free to drop a comment in the comments box below. Or if you're watching in the course, you know, drop a comment in the discussions or head on over to the communities. Um, if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Shooting Star SVG. Show your business, change your life. Now, like and subscribe. Cry. And you better get excitement. If your mom tells you not to scream, the scream anyways. <laughs> Smash the like button. Do it now. Bye, guys.